You know that way that you sort of hate listening to an album, not because it's necessarily bad, because of the sort of emotions that it evokes, how vulnerable or fragile it makes you feel. Um, there's albums like Hospice and Skeleton Tree, A Crow Looked At Me and many more that can be considered as such, but for me the album that always gets me every time, one that I can't listen to frequently but I still love despite that is Etouche Amori's Stage 4. I could sit here and regurgitate words like despair and devastation and 50 other synonyms but I still wouldn't manage to capture this record's magnitude. Um, a lot of acts have uh, managed to um, word how horrible certain situations in their lives have been um, in a way where it can feel like the, that sort of process um, helps them. Um, and stage four seems to sort of be like that, um, though the, the pain still feels quite raw. Um, Jeremy Bohm, who's the frontman of Tushi Mori, um, still feels quite clearly and understandably in pain, and isn't quite even. He's not even like close to coping with the death of his mother. It's not until pretty much the final track that even like a hint of closure even seems plausible to him. Uh, moments like Rapture, where he just slowly repeats himself, going how someone you love is gone. Um, he keeps repeating himself and with every repetition of it, it seems like a, cra a new crack is starting to show, like he's just starting to like fall apart um, and he, he eventually has to take a break from saying it and it's one of many, many depressing <laughs> moments on this record. Um, almost feels like you're there in whatever room he happens to be in just holding his hand going it's, it's alright mate when you know well that this is still a really raw and kind of just really volatile situation to be in. And I hate to sound like hyperbolic or that but stage four isn't so much a a listening experience at points, it feels quite like a journey and um, we get to see moments um, like Benediction where it, it, it's very brief but it seems like Jeremy's managing to comfort himself a little bit, um, admitting to himself that despite his like mum's bad um, mental and physical state at this point as she's dying, that um, how could she possibly forget him, like so, some things like that where if you've ever had to be in a, a grieving mindset like you are your own worst enemy, so moments like this where he's genuinely trying to move on and kind of like reassure himself um, hits even more if you've ever been in that sort of situation. Even out with that I feel like this is going to be still a powerful lesson just because of how raw and how honest and transparent it is. Um, only a few songs later do we get something like Palm Dreams um, where this stint of positivity just comes to an end um, as all the memories and pain affiliated with it just sneak in. It's a pretty bittersweet song where um, Jeremy starts like trawling through his mum's old things and he gets a sense of her as a person, but a person who you'll never be able to discuss them with. It's like meeting somebody in a dream who you get on with so well but they're not quite real, but it's even worse because you did get to know that person in real life and oh it's, it's it, yeah, again, like like I was saying, like so many like powerful moments like that where the, the reality of the situation like just hits you like a 10 ton truck. Like all journeys though it does come to an end and when this one does come to an end thankfully there's a bit of a more upbeat tone going through it, um, though again it's no less heartbreaking um, which is the song Skyscraper. Um, the band bring in uh, Julian Baker for support and vocals, her voice is just so apt for what the situation's calling for. Um, and it's just a closer that anyone would be envious of but no one would be envious about how how you came across having to make this sort of song in that sort of situation is something that anyone's really wanting to happen. Um, the final voicemail on this song though, it just isn't fair. It's not fair. It gets me every time hearing Jeremy's mum say her final goodbye. It feels so impactful and it's an inclusion that just shows um, shows how Jeremy's closure um, is, is going to be plausible. Like We all end up getting over it at some point. Um, it's just the fact that he's, he's shown this really personal thing, it's almost like this album has managed to be quite a good coping mechanism in a way. Um, but yeah, 2016 was littered with fantastic releases and this one may just be the most underrated in a year that was where, where albums like Black Star and Atrocity Exhibition were getting all the praise that they deserved. I think that, that Touche and Mori kind of missed out a little bit. So if you've not listened to this, honestly, I think you're missing out on one of the decade's best. Um, post-hardcore um, releases, um, Screamo as well, I'm trying to think of all the genre labels but it's, the main thing is how personal and how just fueled by love and rage and just 
being in a volatile mindset. Um, if you listen to it, let me know what you make of it. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you guys tomorrow for another Christmas cracker. As always, thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay hydrated.